Hey, happy Tuesday, everyone. This is Nick Miller coming at you from Climb in the Pocket. I'm excited to announce a brand new weekly segment coming on Tuesdays uh, that we are going to call Purple Process. Um, this is where uh, I'm going to come in and we're going to talk a little bit about the front office, what's going on uh, behind the scenes, what's happened in the past, what's currently going on, and what's going to happen in the future when it comes to uh, this roster building process. Uh, it's called Purple Process, uh, based off the riff of the Philadelphia 76ers, Trust the Process. And when I'm coming here to you today, when the Vikings are sitting at 0-3, uh, that's what I'm going to ask you all, is to trust the process. Um, so I want to spend a little bit of time today just chatting through you know, how we got to where we are and, and where I think I, uh, where things stand and where we can go uh, moving forward. So let's talk about that little uh, 0-3 start. I would say most of us would say, if you were to say the biggest factor uh, when it comes to how did we get 0-3 relative to our expectations this year is the turnovers. So uh, currently, I think that the Vikings have two interceptions and seven lost fumbles. I think we recovered a fumble and I think we have interceptions. It gives us a seven uh, turnover differential on the season and between three games that's your difference between winning and losing so i think most people would say ah, maybe not the philadelphia game but between tampa bay and uh the chargers that the vikings should have probably won both those games had they not turned over the ball multiple times there are some other factors in there the defense isn't playing the best they, they've got some some uh, making up to do but overall this is a pretty solid team and so despite that i'm seeing crazy stuff going all over Twitter or on even some of our own ver very own beat writers um, going on saying, is Quasi up for the job? You know, what's going on? You know, why, why, who's to blame for this 0-3 start? And when you see some flaws on the field, uh, it's natural to start pointing fingers somewhere. You know, you can point them at Kevin O'Connell, uh, but, you know, he went 13-4. We like his personality. He seems to take responsibility. He seems to have some talent. He's great for the culture. People seem to love him. We don't really want to blame him. So, you know, let's go to the man behind the curtain and, and blame him for, you know, the failures to start the season. After all, you know, the defense doesn't look good, whatever. I want to everyone to kind of take a breath here and look at, you know, how do we get here in the first place? So, when Quasey and Kevin O'Connell took over uh, at the start of uh, 2002, um, they were given a mandate to win. Uh, they had a lot of players left over uh, from you know the previous regime. Those players famously went to the Wilfs and said, "Hey, you know we have a good thing going here. We have a talented team. Let's not give up on on this. We just need a better culture, better coaching, and we can achieve." And you know what? They went in. A few kind of roster tweaks there and and signing players like Zadarius Smith and, and others. And they reached 13 and 4. But here's the, the sneaky news there. If you look, take a look at any advanced metrics, uh, this team was closer to a 500 team. And we knew that. They won 11 and 0, went 11 and 0 in one score games. That's not sustainable. We're seeing that this year. And so this team had some flaws. It had some flaws to carry over. It probably should have been reset right when, you know, Quasey and Kevin were hired. Uh, but that's not what the Wolves wanted to do, and it's their team, and they get to set the direction. So they held on to Kirk Cousins. They gave him a one-year extension. They held on to players. And so heading into this year, they still held on to Kirk Cousins. They restructured his contract, but they moved a lot of uh, out from a lot of aging veterans. And in their place, they needed some young players to step up. Well, here's the problem. Uh, at the end of Rick Spielman's tenure as GM, they had awful drafts. They obviously, you know, acquired a number of key, you know, big players. You know, uh, Justin Jefferson, obviously, Christian Darrisaw, um, you know, some talented, young, you know, uh, future, um, you know, franchise players with those two. Uh, they're currently franchise players, not future. Uh, but their defensive players they drafted were, just to put it mildly, awful. Um, and so then you had Quasi come in, and I'm going to give him – the due criticism here, you know, whether it was with Rick Spielman scouts or not, you know, he came in and he selected, uh, you know, pretty are players that have a lot of room for growth <laughs> still in their careers. If I want to be uh, as friendly as possible to it. So the start of the draft, Lewis seen Andrew Booth, uh, Ed Ingram, Brian Osamoa um, between, you know, the four of them, you know, Ed Ingram is the only one that's really playing and he's about, probably about to lose his job to Dalton Reisner. So as bad as the 2022 draft can go. Um, but that being said, 
we knew this team needed to be reset. It was only really a 500 team last year that, you know, got a lot of luck along the way. Um, and heading into this year, they made a few changes. They had to move on and start a brand new defensive scheme. They got, you know, players like, uh, a Caleb Evans, who played a few games last year, coming as his second year as first year starter. Um, you know, they expected Brian, Os- Brian Osmo to be the starter. It turns out it's Ivan Pace Jr., who's an undrafted free agent. He's a starter. You know, we have uh, Harrison Phillips starting right the defensive line. I mean, he's a solid player. He's probably the only starter caliber player. You know, the rest of our defensive line is either, you know, young players uh, like Jacqueline Roy, who's a rookie, or old veterans like Dean Lowry, who's rosterable, but uh, overall not really a starting player. Um, and we're asking Brian Flores to work miracles with those players and and create something out of nothing. And lo and behold, uh, after three weeks, um, there are some growing pains and there's <laughs> some weaknesses. But that's what we expected. When we looked at this roster, that's that's going into it. That's what, you know, I don't think any time throughout the offseason, we looked at this roster and said, you know what, I feel confident that, you know, Brian Flores is going to have a top 10 defense and anyone telling you that uh was uh has a little bit too much faith and and has the uh, purple uh shaded glasses so we knew that uh this team was going to depend on the offense and the offense has been killing it you know between kirk cousins is on pace for breaking all kinds of records justin jefferson was one yard short of being the first player to score to have 150 yards receiving each of the first three games. Jordan Addison, by the way, which is also a Quasi draft pick, uh, is doing incredibly well. He has two touchdowns through three weeks and really turned on in the second half of that Chargers game. Now you get look at players like Ed Ingram, you know, who's uh, right guard and struggling. He was a Quasi draft pick. They stuck with him into the second year. You know, I talked a little bit about this last week when I talked about the Vikings signing Dalton Reiser. Here's the thing. When you have a second round draft pick, um, and he played every single snap last year, you're going to give him a second chance. You're going to give him another opportunity. And here's another uh, thing for you to consider. Not a single person outside of the Vikings organization can tell you uh, with 100% certainty who has control of the 53-man roster. Uh, and all the criticism that's come this week, a lot of it is, is gone towards Kwesi Adofa Mensa. Uh, when they came in, they talked all about collaboration, whether it be you know, Kwesi and Kevin or bring in Ryan Gregson, you know, the Wilfs are involved in, in decision-making. Um, you know, you have members of the old regime there that are, are still, you know, uh, critical factors like their cap guru. Uh, you have the coaching staff, you know, when you brought in Brian Flores this year, he has a personnel background. He had a say in, in probably bringing in guys like Dean Lowry or, you know, Mike Smith, who's the linebackers coach has a history with the Green Bay Packers. So, there's a lot of cooks uh, in this kitchen and just uh, put it squarely on one person, I think is a little bit misguided. And so you take a guy like Ed Ingram, you're going to give him a chance opportunity. Who knows? Maybe it was Kevin O'Connell uh, that said, Hey, I want to coach this guy up. I want to give him another shot at right guard. He showed some things last year or, you know, our, my offensive line coach really believes in, um, you know, Quasey, can you hold off? You know, I know you brought in Dalton Reisner for a visit, you know, let's give Ed Ingram a few weeks and then we'll bring in, you know, Dalton Reisner, Reisner to compete. No one knows the answer to that. It's just a lot of speculation right now. Or it could have been Questy this entire time. We just don't know. But what we do know is that this whole thing is a collaborative process. Um, and so, you know, they're going to make decisions together, you know, what's good for the franchise or not. And that's going to be the same thing that happens, you know, over these next few weeks when they're we're trying to determine how to move forward. But this isn't a bad roster. Uh, or at least I should say elements of this are not a bad roster. They have core key players, which is why, Without those turnovers, everyone would expect it to be two and one. So I wouldn't say that this is a dumpster fire. I think anyone that's saying that, you know, or who's, who has, who's claiming to have 2020 vision right now, looking back and saying we should have done this, we should have done that, or this roster isn't ready to compete. First thing I'd say to you is what were your expectations going into the season? Because if they were to repeat at 13 and four or achieve higher or, you know, steamroll through this conference, I think that you're a little bit misguided. You could take a look at Vegas. Vegas had the Vikings win odds at eight and a half going to the season so and they they kind of knew they got the gist and then here's the other thing if they were actually two and one right now uh, and winning cures all ails they were two and one and uh no one would be complaining about the personnel no one would be calling and saying is quasi over his head but we've had a we've lost the turnover differential by seven and that's played a huge factor in losing these last few games and suddenly everyone's losing their minds and saying that uh you know that the the train has come off the tracks and that we know our people in over their head. So uh, my uh, 
review of these first few weeks is everyone really does need to calm down and look at that this is always going to be a multi-year process. I mean, you got a mandate coming in that you need to win. You have probably held on to players and an approach, you know, last year that frankly, if the decision making had been solely up to Quasi and Kevin, that they would probably moved on from. And so they started that process this year by moving on from Eric Hendricks, Adam Thielen, um, you know, Dalvin Cook. Um, you know, they reduced Harrison Smith's contract is probably his last year. It's a changing of the guard. And when you have that much turnover, especially of, you know, and Adam Thielen, who we're going to play this week, so much turnover uh, with the roster, um, a lot of those long-term players, and you didn't do well in drafts even before, you know, Quasi and Kevin got here, there's going to be some growing pains and there's going to be some time to take over um, on that roster. And so um, I would just plead with all of you that, you know, I think that this wasn't going to be a championship contending team from the very beginning. And so what are some of those young players like Ivan Pace that can step up or Makai Blackman or a Caleb Evans that show your show that you can be, you know, the future of this team on defense where those building blocks. And as of right now, they have about $55 million in cap space next year. Um, they're going to be looking towards the draft uh, to, you know, potentially bring in a new quarterback if they decide to move on from Kirk Cousins and completely, you know, hit the reset button and restart on this regime. You know, they'll have some top pieces in place. You know, I would plead uh, patience on Justin Jefferson, too. I know and he, uh, taking a second, that's a huge criticism that people have had of uh, of Quasi and the regime, you know, as well here. And, you know, I just want to throw this little tidbit for you. You know, Mark Wilf was heavily involved in that process. And um, i pretty confident in saying this, and someone correct me. I don't think there's been a single non-quarterback uh, first-round pick who's been re-signed after their third year um, coming out of the draft. And I'm pretty sure owners want to keep it that way. So the fact that uh, Justin Jefferson didn't get his contract uh, this offseason and the Vikings didn't meet the demands and Mark Wilf was heavily involved in that process – uh, doesn't surprise me. Um, I don't think Quasi and and that front office was saying, you know what, Mark, I don't think that, I know you want to give him a contract, but I don't think Justin Jefferson is that good of a player. I don't think that that happened at all. And when the owner's involved as directly as Mark Wilf claimed he was in this negotiating process, if the deal doesn't get done, it's probably because the owner didn't sign off on it. So, you know, I, I think that there's still a lot of hope for this team. I think that they're on the right track. I think that you know, despite the 0-3 record, uh, Quasi is looking at roster construction the right way. If you take a look at this past draft, he dra drafted a bunch of players at premium positions. I think Kevin O'Connell is doing the right thing by focusing on, you know, how can the Vikings win through the passing game? You know, Brian Flores is trying to 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 emphasize disrupting the quarterback. It didn't work last week, you know, with all the blitzes, but partly to do with that's personnel. But it's going to take time. Uh, the Vikings are, it's probably going to take a few years for the Vikings to get squared away on defense with some good draft picks, you know, rebuilding those trenches and the interior offense line and the entire defensive line, bringing in those edge players. It's going to be a multi-year process. And I think with this 0-3 record to start the season, a lot more people are coming to grips with the fact that this was not built as a contending team and that this is something where we are more on the rebuild side of the competitive rebuild and the turnovers have frankly you know displayed a few more cracks than that armor um so um like i said i'm still confident in in this regime uh i think that they're on the right track i think there's a lot of big questions coming up for the rest of the season before the trade deadline and before the off season but uh, i would urge everyone to remain patient uh, you know, think through things. What were the expectations? Uh, and and th and really examine. You know, you know how can this season uh, really display? You know, what's working well, what's not. Continue to refine that. You know, those players who are the cornerstones, and then really focus on the draft. And if they move in the direction of moving on from Kirk Cousins after the season uh, and taking a quarterback, that will actually be you know the first real. Uh, start of the time clock uh, for for Quasi and Kevin, uh, because until they have their quarterback, um, all this that they're doing is really, you know, the continuation of the uh, Rick Spielman and Mike Zimmer regime. So there's a lot here that's going to 
about to unfold. I'm very excited about it and very passionate about it. Uh, I hope that uh, over the rest of the weeks of the season, uh, you join me and that we continue this conversation. Uh, if you think I'm full of it or you think anything I said was wrong, uh, I urge you to uh, hop in the comments here on YouTube or, or, or uh, tweet at me and let me know, you know, what's what. But uh, I'll just say, trust the purple process and everything will work out fine. Uh, thanks again, guys. Uh, follow us and uh, like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, and thank you to our sponsors, uh, the Eastside Jiu-Jitsu, that's badass work, uh, uh, word art, and uh, Lake Monster Brewing. On uh, that, I'll be signing off, and I will uh, see you guys later.